James Hardy suspends its dividend. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my afternoon stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this news from news.com.au discussing James Hardy suspending its dividend. Now it's a brand a lot of the viewers I'm sure are quite familiar with. They produce a lot of building materials and well, I'm sure everyone who works in the domestic sector is familiar with it and everyone who works in the commercial sector is familiar with it. I think changes to housing approvals will affect them. So could this be, could this be the concerns of James Hardy or the warnings of James Hardy? Could this be a forerunner or a leading indicator of what's happening in the rest of the construction industry? I know it's a bit of a mixed bag in construction right now, depending on who you talk to affects or you know, depends on if they're going gangbusters or if they're a bit quiet or if they're really starting to struggle and looking for work. It depends. It's a mix. We are quite fortunate at the moment because we have some government work. I wish I could say that was to do with my fantastic planning and uh, you know predicting the future and lining everything up, but it just happens when it happens, to be honest. You know, you've got a whole wealth of clients. Well, I guess it's it's having a diversity of clients and uh, you know when some of them get busy, you're there to take care of them. That's the challenge. It's always challenging in small business too if you get too in bed with one sector breaking out and getting into the others. So let's have a look at uh, the Google for the James Hardy Industries. We can look at their share price. Now back in Feb, they're at $31 round about and they've taken a hit, pretty much cut in half like everyone else. And they've just jumped up on, on this news today. They've gone up 5.69%. So they've gone up a dollar on suspending their dividend. So let's have a look at this. Building products manufacturer James Hardy has suspended dividend payments due to the pandemic and has tightened its profit guidance to US $350 million to US $355 million. Okay, so they pulled it down. That's the range of their profits. And what's this? what this is telling us, that the market has responded positively, that they may have priced in worse, uh, you know, worse outcome, a worse result or anticipated a worse situation from James Hardy, we'll have to see. In a trading update, management said dividends for the full year 2020 were suspended to help liquidity and manage market volatility. The decision follows a raft of companies doing likewise since the onset of the pandemic. James Hardy shares worth $20.18. Trading finished on Monday and have slipped 25% in value since January 1, were amid a wider market downturn. Well, they're up now to 21.95 as I look on the screen right there. Profit, gui profit guidance was revised from the broader range of 350 million to 370 to a tighter 355 to 350. So in view of their fourth quarter results, James Hardy on Thursday said it had achieved double digit volume growth in North America, strong revenue growth in Europe and Asia Pacific results were in line with expectations. However, there were higher than expected costs in Europe and unplanned costs at manufacturing plants in Spain, New Zealand, and the Philippines due to the pandemic. Management will give details of the fourth quarter results on May 19th. Management also announced the closure of a number of sites, which it said would improve global operations. These include its manufacturing plants in Somerville in the US, Kuroi in Queensland, and the temporary closure of its plant in Singelgen in Germany. Now, Kuroi in Queensland, I'm just looking that up because, well, I want to see where it is. So we've got Kuroi, okay, it's inland from, inland from Nusa. If we have a look here, you guys. So, well, that's going to be that's going to be an impact to that local community up there, isn't it? It's definitely going to be an impact to that local community. At Kuroi, the formwork business James Hardy Systems will also close. Manufacturing in New Zealand will also stop. This will this work will be moved to plants in Australia. So the Kiwis are losing and Australia is winning. The decision will mean 375 fewer workers. Now, 
In the grand scheme of things, that may not seem like a lot, but to Kuroi, that's gonna gonna make a difference, isn't it, everyone? The changes will contribute to about 90 million in impairment expenses in the fourth quarter. The company also aims to improve its financial position by making quarterly payments to the Asbestos Inju Injuries Compensation Fund rather than one lump sum. The business is still compensating the many workers and their families who suffered from its manufacturing of asbestos products. So let's jump over to the housing approvals data from the ABS that was just released yesterday. Now it hasn't been that exciting nothing as dramatic as recent changes you can see it's slightly up on trend seasonally adjusted slightly down it really hasn't moved that much it really hasn't moved that much but argue, i'd argue that well demand for housing and housing approval will feed into james hardy's at least domestic sector here in australia for a lot of their products they make a lot of stuff used in domestic housing so we can see here Total dwelling unit approvals from March 19 to 20 is up 1%. From Feb to March is up 1.3%. So private sector houses, they're down 2% from 19 to 20. And this is the approvals. Private sector dwellings excluding houses, so units are up 5.2% from March 19 to March 20. And that's, that's surprising, but they did take a big hit recently. And then seasonally adjusted. Total dwelling units approved, 0.2%. Seasonally adjusted houses are down 2.2%. Private sector dwelling units excluding houses is up 3.4%. So it's taken more of a hit. So let's have a look. The March key points. Total dwelling units. The trend estimate for total dwelling units approved rose 1.3% in March. The seasonally adjusted estimate for total dwelling dwellings approvals fell 4% in March. Private sector houses. Trend estimates for private sector houses approved rose 0.2 in March. Seasonally adjusted estimate for private sector houses fell 1.2%. So private sector dwellings excluding houses rose 2.8 in March. So let's jump over. Oh, we'll look at the, the values here. So trend estimates for value of total building approvals rose 1.3% in March and has risen for four months. The value of residential building rose 0.4%, 0.5%, and has risen for seven months. The value of non-residential building rose 2.3% and has risen for three months. The seasonally adjusted estimates for the value of total buildings building approved fell 6.5% in March. The value of residential building fell 5.9%, while the value of non-residential building fell 7.3%. And if we jump here, we can have a look at the building approvals. Total numbers, trend estimates for Australia was up 1.3%. Private dwelling, Private sector houses was up 0.2. Sector dwellings excluding houses 2.8. New residential work rose. Alterations and additions. It rose and has been going up for four months. Non-residential buildings rose and has been rising for three months. And if we jump over to the units, we can have a look here. They've gone up 1.3% in March. But you can see that fall from... Know, September down okay and a lot of this we can see here in foreign investment driving up demand for units here in Australia in well the approvals when in 16 17 you can see here the approvals went down so we're a bit of a slump here guys because remember these approvals they're a leading indicator for work in the construction industry they'll tell you what work is coming up so it's sitting kind of kind of quiet at the moment. There's a bit of a slump. It's not doing too well. And there you go, look at houses. So it's down from, what, 11 or 10, 9? Down under 9,000. And this is why when people are talking, like certain economists or property bulls, are talking about how the disaster of the bushfires will be good for the economy. I mean, that, that's ludicrous. It doesn't make sense if you really think about it. But also just the numbers of it. It's 1,000 houses. It's not that big. It's going to be a big impact on the people that are dealing with it, but it's not that big. So there we have it. We'll have a jump here. This is their announcement released on the 5th of May. And I'll link to that if you'd want to go through it in any greater detail. But we'll just read the business update. James Hardy also shared an update on its global business, including additional detail on finance, financial and operational performance. 
two years ago, we established a strategic and scalable management system to drive sustainable and profitable growth. Now the management system has also pro proved to be critical to our ability to navigate through the global pandemic crisis, said Dr. Trong. By operating in a safe, sustainable and thoughtful manner, we continue to protect our employees, drive value to our customers, minimize disruptions to our plants and preserve liquidity and anticipation of potentially prolonged period of market volatility. So compared to some of the companies over in the States that are pretty much just riding on debt, I wonder how James Hardy is positioned. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the comments below, guys. Is James Hardy part of your portfolio? Are you in the business of using their products? Do you think they'd have continued opportunity, perhaps with the government stimulating the construction industry because they don't know how to do anything else? This could be a smart thing to look at. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can use our affiliate links of Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or KuCoin, all down below. Get our merch from Heiser Says, use Skull Path from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.